I'm Blair Corbett, and this is Jimmy Elliott. We're representing uh, Project for Healing Humanities World Vigil for self harmers that have well that are self harming due to sexual abuse or have it in their past. I hope you watch, and uh, if you're on Twitter, you can tweet uh, pound or what is it, Jimmy? Hashtag World Vigil. So Hashtag we're going to be both Vigil. tweeting. Yes, we'll be both tweeting from there as much as we can. Jimmy's faster at this than I am, so this will be awesome. So, we're representing, or actually this is being hosted by Project for Healing Humanity. Um, we thank them for doing this. Nobody from Project for Healing Humanity could be here today. Uh, there's a lot going on behind the scenes, and Fernanda herself is um, <clears throat> doing a lot of work in other countries. Uh, that I can't talk about yet, but um, spreading the word and trying to do things that we ultimately hope will bring healing to a lot of people that have gone through different things. So <clears throat> I'm going to introduce Jimmy and myself. I'm Blair Corbett with Arc of Hope for Children and ResovingChains.org. Um, Jimmy is the other guy here. Is Jimmy Elliott? A lot of you probably know him. Jimmy's been working for many, many years. Well, I say many, many, quite a few years on uh, reaching out to people that are young people that are going through uh, depression, uh, self harm, um, suicidal thoughts, any of that. So he's going to talk a lot about or a little about what he does before we go into this. And um, I just want to really thank you for coming. Um, I want to set the tone right. And uh, so I'll, I'll do some announcements and things at the end. So. I'm going to introduce Jimmy now, and we'll get into this. But I don't know if any of you received a survey that we did. Um, we did a survey on self-harm. Uh, if you did, we're going to bring up some of the results of that generally. If you didn't, we're going to put a link on this video for um, you know that relies that goes along with this. What if you've self-harmed and you have? Uh, uh, child um, sexual abuse, child abuse, any of that in your past that's caused you to be where you're self-arming. So we will put up links to that so you can still do that uh, um, survey. So any further ado, this is Jimmy Elliott from Holding of Wrist. And Jimmy, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you got Holding of Wrist started? Of course. Um, my name is Jimmy Elliott. I started a group called Holding of Wrist back in 2008. And basically how that came about was I was in seventh grade and I was having a whole bunch of health issues. My heart rate would go up to 300 and it would go down to 30 within seconds. And the doctors took me out of school in seventh grade because they were honestly scared that something was going to happen in school. So um, I quickly became depressed because I was constantly at home alone. Um, the only person I saw really was my mom, and the furthest I could go was as far as the courts would let me. And so I started using self-harm as a way to cope through the issues I was going through, like many of you all do. And that lasted for over a year. In 2008, I attempted suicide because I was fed up with life, and um, I, I honestly told God, I was like, I'm giving you one last chance to give me a sign that everything will be okay. And he didn't, so I took action into my own hands, unfortunately. Um, fortunately, though, um, I'm alive, <laughs> so that's good. But in October of 2008, I started holding a wrist, and it started with a simple idea of helping others through self-harm, depression, and suicidal thoughts. Within a couple of weeks, 200 plus people joined our MySpace back in the time, our MySpace group. And I thought, okay, this is awesome. What do I do with this? So over the course of from 2008 to now, it has grown to over 100,000 plus people. And we have responded to over 75,000 emails from people in over 50 countries. And that alone is awesome. Um, I've truly been blessed by everybody that I've talked to over the past four years, and it's incredible to see how many awesome people are out in the world. What we do is we, we have a team of people that respond to emails from everybody around the world, and we really want to reach out to everybody 
and let them know that there is hope and that everything will be okay and that you're going to make it through. If you have a support system, you will make it through, and that's what we're trying to be for people who don't have a support system. Was that good? I muted myself. <laughs> That's excellent, man. I'm really proud of you for doing all that. Thank and you. Um, I'm going to have to focus. On what you're saying now better than there's problems if you can see the vigil on YouTube or anywhere else. It's being recorded. It We know it's live on the Google community pages uh, for Project for Healing Humanity. So if you go into Google Plus and go and look, it will show up there. We have a community for that. We're trying to figure out why it won't, sh why it's not showing up on the YouTube page yet. But anyhow, we're just going to keep going, right, Jimmy? And no yes. matter what, this is being recorded, so we'll see you'll it. be able to see it. As long as we connect to the people, that's yeah, all that matters. That's right. And they'll that's eventually right. see it. That's right. I'm hearing you're tweeting. Where are you? Okay, Jimmy, I'm going to have to try to fix this because people are tweeting where are you and stuff like that. So, Jimmy, okay. why don't you just go on and keep talking about stuff with how? Okay. I'm hearing some kind of feedback in the back end. Is that, are you playing anything? No. Just me. Okay, go ahead. But right, um, back to holding a wrist. When I attempted suicide in January of 2008, that was the moment when my life really turned around. People keep asking me, like, what was it that... Are you to talk about yourself? Or what you... Hmm? I think Blair's breaking up. <laughs> but like I was saying, um, holding a wrist back in October... Um, when I started it, October 6, 2008, that was a moment that changed my life because hundreds of people joined and it was insane. I was suddenly thrown into this, you know, group, which isn't even still an organization yet. We don't even have a website up, but it's incredible to see the response that Holding a Wrist has gotten and how much my life has been impacted by everybody that I've talked to. It's incredible. Um, people ask me, how did you overcome self-harm and suicidal thoughts and honestly don't have a direct forward answer for that because there was no real thing that did that. Um, basically, when I attempted suicide, my whole mentality changed and that's how I believe that you can make yourself be happy. If you smile, then everything will be okay and eventually it will fix. It just takes time, effort, dedication, and sometimes believing that, you know, positive will come out of this eventually. Because when I was dealing with self-harm and all of this, I didn't think that would go anywhere in life. I, I was like, this is as far as I'm going to get in life, and I'm just going to continue doing this terrible thing every single day, like I was doing back then. And that's, that's all I thought my life was going to be. And I didn't think about the positives and anything or anything in the future. But then holding a wrist came along and that changed my entire outlook because of awesome people. Are you waiting for me? Yes. <laughs> All right, cool. Well, I'm trying to still get things fixed on whatever's happening on why it's not showing live. But uh, we apologize. YouTube and Google Plus have some sort of a glitch going on. So um, we're just going to keep going, though. And, Jimmy, if you want to tweet that we're having uh, um, technical difficulties. <laughs> I can do that. Okay. I just, yeah. I just tweet it's out. It's just something with Google Plus. Good. Well, tell them it's being recorded, but I'm trying to figure out if I anything I can do on our end to make it show up. Mm -hmm. But if not, we know it's being recorded. 
and that's all that matters. All right. So there you go. So um, I'm going to try working on this as we go, but you know, uh, as Project for Healing Humanity, thanks to Jimmy and some other great people that got involved, um, we put together some questions that had to do with uh, if you're self-harming due to uh, sexual abuse. And the interesting thing is we looked and looked for anybody that done, had done studies like this before. And nobody, there's nothing that you could find where people have ever, ever done anything showing the relation, showing the connection between the two. And one thing, you know, if, if, if you've been involved in self-harm, perhaps you're doing it now or whatever, you know, we want you to know there's places, people out here, organizations out here that care. We want to help you with, with self-harm itself, with your self-esteem and everything else. We also realize that quite often these things have a, um, have a root in something else. And I, me as being one who's worked with people from uh, that have been sexually abused to child abuse especially, um, that that's a big cause for a lot of this, for why people do that. Now, uh, Jimmy and Fernanda and some other people uh, started a survey. They did some questions and put it out there for, you know, since this hasn't been done before, perhaps some people would be willing to anonymously respond and let us know, are you doing this because of what happened to you, for whatever your reasons are? Um, and we got an incredible number of responses from people um, and we really thank you for your your bravery and for your trust in us that we're gonna keep your identities uh, you know totally private we thank you so much for all the responses that we've gotten um, but we realize that people just really don't start self-harming right Jimmy yeah <laughs> that there's something going on there's there's something going on you now whether it's uh, whether you're self-harming due to, you know, if you've been bullied, um, child abuse, any of that, it's just as important, and it's and it's very much just as important to both Jimmy and I. But Project for Healing Humanity is about doing these world vigils that reach out to people that are um, affected by sexual abuse in some fashion. So we're trying to stay to that sort of theme. So please understand as we bring that up everybody's on the same page we care about all of you we will do anything we can to help um, <clears throat> that being said we got in quite a few results from the survey that talked about people who uh, I mean where you all talked about how you self-harmed due to being sexually abused and it was just phenomenal and heartbreaking yeah. um, you know we understand that um, when you've gone through traumatic things where somebody has uh, <laughs> broken your boundaries and uh, done things to you that all of us need to do something as a survival tactic is if you want to consider it that um, just to keep hanging on so we want as much as we want to be a part of helping that change helping you build a new life a better life from anything that's going on uh, help you put that in your past um, we're here for you to do that so both Jimmy from Holding of Rest and all of his people and myself with Ark of Hope for Children and all of ours um, but I'll be sharing some attempting to share some results of the uh, survey while he's still keeping everything private um, but I'm gonna have Jimmy keep talking um, about just some of the positives about you know how you go about trying to encourage people bring them hope um, uh, help them how holding of wrist does that because we don't know that everybody watching has any help and that's one of the things that I noticed Jimmy a lot on the responses to the survey or we noticed I should say is that not a lot of people have a backup support system of any kind so if you can share about how you all do things with holding of rest while I try to work on the uh, <laughs> some of the um, technical difficulties here that would be great and then I'll jump in and talk about how what we do 
Yeah. Um, well, basically, how holding a wrist works. Hold on, one minute. <laughs> Uh oh, we lost him. He's coming back. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. Well, um, first I want to talk a little bit about the survey. I know Blair touched on it a bit, but I was looking through the results earlier today and some of yesterday. And like he said, it was heart wrenching to see the I mean, it's good to see the amazing response we got, but at the same time it's it's sad because we got that many responses. And looking through it like Blair mentioned, some of you all don't have support systems. We had an option, we had a form on there, like, do you have a support system? A lot of people said no. And that was incredible to me because there is so much help out there. Um, me and Blair are just two of, you know, several hundreds of awesome people out there that really want to help you. Um, I know some of the people involved with holding the wrist, sometimes we pull, like, eight-hour, 12-hour days, making sure that we respond to emails because we honestly care so much about every single person that emails us. And I personally will do anything in my power to help anybody that I possibly can. And if that means staying up all night, by all means, I'll stay up all night if I need to, which I have before, and it's awesome. It's honestly the greatest feeling at the end of the night, you know, that person got help, and that's all that matters. Um, how holding a wrist works is that we have just one single email address and everybody emails that email address. From there, we have myself and Darren Dacey. He is our communications manager at Holding a Wrist and he emails them back within seven business days and so do I. And we work on this daily and we have other people who do other things involved with Holding a Wrist. There's Colleen. She takes care of all of our social media stuff, and that's a lot of stuff to take care of. And Joel Shaw, he takes care of everything, our website, keeping it up, you know, all of that. Because if the website comes down, you know, people lose track of holding a wrist, and there are not always those resources there and how to contact us. Um, I, I really enjoy it when people email us because that means they're reaching out for hope and help and that's that's all that matters sometimes people are very afraid to to reach out but it's very important that you do reach out because without that support system things will go downhill and you're gonna be alone and that will make things worse even if you have a friend or a preacher or a teacher that you can talk to at least have that one person um, we recently had our four-year anniversary and I said in this um, in the holding of wrist four year anniversary video. I was like, if you have that one person that truly loves and cares for you, then you will be okay. And I really believe that. Everybody has that one person that will do anything for them. And that's what holding the wrist is trying to be for that, for that person. Um, it's, it's incredible the past four years and meeting Blair has been incredible because I've known Blair since 2009 I want to say I might be wrong but 2009 and I forget how I met Blair but he came into my life and he was like hey I have this idea and we've been working together on things for three years now um, he's just one of the many connections that I've made through Folding a Wrist and all the people that support Hal and watching those people grow up Somebody, for example, I was talking to somebody from 2008 to now, and she lost contact between 2010 and 2013. But now she's in college, and she's majoring in psychology. And the, the fact that I helped her in 2008 and 2009, and now she's doing psychology is incredible to me. It's just like those little things that, you know, make you feel good because they're doing good. That's all I care about. As long as they're doing good, then everything is okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was trying to do my stuff. Yeah, I can't get all this working, but Jimmy, I'm so proud of what you've been doing. And, you. Um, you know, uh, a lot of people will get involved for whatever reason and, and start something fresh and new. But um, 
I'm amazed that you started this at a very young age. Yes. And um, out of out of your own personal need, mm -hmm. uh, you started this to to reach out to others um, that perhaps are going through the same kind of thing as you. And it seemed to me that you didn't necessarily have the answers when you started yeah. it out. Right? In, in fact, when, when I started holding a bris, because I'm sure that everybody watching this knows that when you're dealing with self-harm, it's a continual thing. You will have withdrawals. You'll have thoughts about harming yourself again. And I still had those when I started holding a bris. I thought I was in a position enough to maybe help one person or two people, but then all of these people came to how, like I said, 200 plus people in less than a month when holding a wrist started and I was kind of lost at the beginning. I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't know how to help these people. But, um, you know, throughout the years I've slowly learned how to help them and now holding a wrist is more professional than it was in 2008 and so we're, we trained ourselves <laughs> and we are not professionals and we highly suggest that everybody we talk to go see a professional because they have the answers. We don't necessarily have all of the answers. They have actual things that can help you long term and we're there to connect you with them and help you short term. And now I'm going to have to chase my dog out of the room in a few minutes. <laughs> but we won't worry about that just yet. Anyhow, my dog um, snuck back in. <laughs> <laughs> My, my dog is awesome. He follows me everywhere, but um, he'll start he'll start sleeping and he snores. Man, it is so funny. Uh, so if you guys hear that, it's not me or I didn't bore my partner to death. So. <laughs> Anyhow, well, that's – Jimmy, that's fantastic. And um, now I know you're – the way that you uh, – that how has helped people – uh, is a lot by email, correct? Yes, we do all of our communication by email um, for multiple reasons, but one of the reasons being that we can keep track of when we talk to them and what they were last doing when we last talked to them, and so we can you know stay updated on them. Man, that's awesome. So we, uh, Arc of Hope for Children has a similar sort of uh, Thing. In other words, in, in the sense that we didn't plan on things happening, but we've been active online since uh, actually before Arc of Hope for Children became a real nonprofit organization. And um, since 1992, we've been doing, before live, ch I mean, before social networks were there, we started with offering people, you know, how can we help? Um, anybody who might be going through depression somewhere else or going through whatever it is and maybe they don't, they don't have anybody right there that can help them. So um, we just thought, well, if that's happening, let's just start talking and offer them a place. Well, here we are 20 years later and um, I've talked to hundreds of people online that are nowhere near uh, where I live. And it's been pretty amazing as we touched lives of people that I've never, or some of us have never even met in person and will never meet but um, to fast forward to how it all came about is uh, back in 1992 1990 well whatever it was we started an organization called chain um, that, that was helping people in the, all the different social networks uh, my partner that my partner my friend that I started that with uh, Mike Hawkinson he goes by one voice he um, he and I were the best friends you could imagine. He lived in uh, Arizona and I lived in Illinois. Just a huge compassionate heart. Um, the, the longer we knew each other, the more disabled Mike became and uh, still never lost his heart for, for helping people and bringing them hope in whatever kind of way he could. And in 2004, Mike passed away. And we never had gotten to meet, but I still consider him the closest friend, really, that I think I've ever had. The reason for that, it, it, there's a lot of reasons for that, but in, in, in the willingness to selflessly reach out and help others, that um, 
in whatever way we could. So anyhow, years later, or during that process, I started Arc of Hope for Children, but years later, we developed uh, an ability to build a website that allows us to help people in live chat online. So rather than counting on all the social networks, which we're still there, it's, you know, we're on uh, Twitter, Facebook, still even on MySpace. <laughs> I don't know if anybody really uses MySpace. Uh, Tumblr and you name it. We're just, we try to be available on all those. But redirecting people over to our, our new website called removingchains.org. Um, and that is a specially designed website that we're still working on, but it is live. It offers a dozen different chat rooms for people for whatever you've gone through, whatever kind of uh, situation. But um, especially abuse, whether child abuse or um, rape, uh, whether male or female. Uh, people go through a lot of things, and they're very serious things. And um, a lot of people have nobody to lean on. Um, we understand that those of you watching that have been through uh, child abuse, uh, whether male or female, whether you're going through it now, some of you have been through it 20 years ago, um, that you've never really been able to talk to anybody in person about that. So what we discovered uh, as far as Arc of Hope for Children is, is that people were more willing to talk when they didn't see us face to face. It gave them ability to trust when they knew they could just hit the delete button, so to speak, and just uh, just leave, you know, if they felt uncomfortable. Um, so building upon that, um, we've made ourselves available now through this website. And um, we know that what you're going through is very real and is um, doing things to you, you know, you really want to change. What you need help with is having people that will listen to you, that you can come to know you can trust, people that will uh, stand alongside of you, that will be a best friend, that will listen no matter what it is you have to tell them, um, that will not be shocked by anything that you have to say. So that's what we've tried to build through live chat, and it's all very similar to what Jimmy's doing with holding of wrist. So um, in many ways, we have the same, you know, a kind of uh, a vision or heart, let's say, to reach out to people that whatever your need is, we want to be there. Um, and we want to uh, attract volunteers and that, that have that same type of heart, to listen, to care, to love, not judge. Um, so now Jimmy is doing that with holding of wrist. And we are doing that through Arc of Hope for Children with removingchains.org. And we want to tell you that, you know, we didn't just do this uh, vigil, or I mean, excuse me, the self-harm survey so we could gather a bunch of information. Um, we also want people, like we said in the, in the survey, we noticed that a lot of people have no support. And um, many of you, I assume, cannot afford counseling. Maybe you've never tried. Maybe you've been afraid to try. I know whether you connect with holding of wrist or removing chains uh, .org or both of them, um, we will be there to help you. We're not professional counselors um, or therapists, but we are there for you. And we will do our best to help you when you're ready, connect with professionals in your area that um, that can help. Now, the beautiful thing is I know Jimmy, uh, with his going on for years, and our, our removingchains.org, that's still new, but still has a, a, a global following for both of them. I know um, we're reaching out to people and attempting to touch lives in many countries all over the world. So I want to encourage you that if you've been through, are going through any of this, whether it's self-harm um, due to whatever reasons, but especially with sexual abuse, uh, child abuse, or any of that, that we're here for you, um, both organizations, and of course, Partnership for Healing Humanity, who's hosting this. Um, they, 
they've been such a blessing in that they, they came up with this concept. Fernando Mejia came up with this concept of having these vigils on different types of, uh, of abuse and bringing in organizations of people that actually help. So rather than us bringing up just, oh, this is horrible, statistically things are happening, um, she's bringing in people that will be able to at least offer their help in some way. So that's what Jimmy from Holding and Wrist and myself are doing here. We hope that you'll reach out to us. Give us an opportunity to um, be that light in your life that can bring the hope, that can bring the change, that can just help you carry on for the next day or whatever it is. Um, I'd, like, I'd like to chime in. Go um, for it. About reaching out for help, um, we both Blair and I know how difficult it is to reach out for help. When I was dealing with all of my issues in 2007, I never reached out for help. I didn't even know that you know there were things available like this, you know that would help you through issues like this. Um, I didn't go to counseling because I didn't believe in going to counseling. I was too scared, probably. But that was one of the biggest mistakes I made was not reaching out for help. Um, I dealt with my issues alone and I just made everything worse. Blair and I and everybody else in this whole entire team are constantly here for you. We, we believe in you and we want to help you. And as difficult as it is to reach out for help, like Blair said, at least give us a shot if you're up for it. Contact one of us. I'm sure there's contact information somewhere on this page. And, you know, just try it because it's, it's worth it and it will help you, I promise. Yeah, it will. Um, it's so, so awesome that even though you're going, even if you're going through things like uh, child abuse and it's still happening or, uh, um, or, you know, bullying and things like that that are, that are uh, just making your everyday feel terrible, um, we both want to provide to you uh, people with huge hearts that will stand with you. Uh, in whatever way every day, uh, whatever way you're capable of doing, to help you hang on and, and to show you, uh, to help you see that by standing with us, there, the, it brings you hope, it brings you some sense of comfort. And Jimmy knows from going through his situation that he was at very dark, uh, difficult times uh, when he was younger and now um, things are quite a bit different. Things do change. Uh, there is hope, and both of us know that. Now I know myself when when I said I started talking about you know trying to help people back in 1992. I went through a lot of stuff in my childhood, but um, in 1996, um, it's as if my world began crashing down around me with uh, some things, very heavy things that were going on, and in, in, uh, um. Well, I'll just say it, losing, uh, having a business that was failing and um, a marriage that was failing, all of that brought on things from my childhood uh, that had happened to me, some of them having to do with abuse. And um, it was, I had thought I'd been able to put them under the rug and not be worried, you know, not, not have to deal with them. It was tough when I was a teen, but then I got over them, or I thought I did. I took them on the rug and never did anything. When I hit my late 30s and all this other stuff started happening, all that started to hit me and flood out. Um, fortunately, the people that I had been talking about before with this organization chain that we started, um, they realized the changes going on in me. I was going through very deep depression became suicidal myself uh, sometimes and it was really amazing because it was only people online that saved me. Uh, the people closest to me, um, it's as if they didn't have a clue, they didn't know how to help. I don't want to believe they didn't care but um, that's where I really find, found out for myself the magic of, <laughs> I say magic, the awesome hope that can come through uh, these great huge hearted people online and um, that's why I was so impressed years later when I saw Jimmy uh, doing this thing on MySpace called Holding of Rest I thought you know what 
that is so needed because I remember, you know, it, here I was in my late 30s. I remember the feeling of I was reliving all the abuse and things that happened to me in my teen years on top of all that stuff. So I want to encourage you, if you're an adult that went through this years ago, like some of you did respond to that on this survey. You said you're, you're older now, but you're still struggling. Um, you know, we're here for you definitely as well. Both organizations, uh, Jimmy, you know, Holding of Rest is not just about teens. Um, it's for anybody. Now, and same thing goes with removingchains.org. We've got specific chat rooms for whatever you're going through. You can get one-on-one -on -one help or group help. But no matter what you're going through, just reach out. You have nothing to lose. Um, by reaching out, you realize that on, on either either way, whether by email or live chat or whatever, that being that it's by computer, you're empowered. You can end the conversation at any time. And um, fortunately, the people that I've helped, that I've been involved with, and I know Jimmy as well, most love it so much that we're, we're their lifeline, at least for a while. And then perhaps you've been the person that's been through this stuff and that you responded in the survey that you did did get some help and um, that perhaps your self-harm, uh, depression, whatever you were going through did come to an end. We thank you for filling out the survey as well, but perhaps you might think about, you know, maybe because of your experiences that you'd be uh, very good at helping either holding of wrist or removing chains uh, in, in the ways that we do things. We would value your input and your help as well because there's thousands of people out there all over the, the world that are going through things and you have the ability because of what you've experienced to help somebody, to touch somebody's life with your own experiences and that can be a huge thing. So we, I just want to encourage you that way for either one of our organizations uh, to, to do that. Um, you know, if, if if you're willing, if you're not willing, there's no pressure. There's never any pressure with either one of us. So, um, Blair. Yes. I'm taking a look at hashtag World Vigil, and I'm not sure if I want to say the person's name or not, but um, she, she asked a question about self-harm, if you want to hear it. Um, she said, I self-harm and my family knows about it. I have tried to stop, but it has left me suicidal. What should I do? Do you want to take it away, Blair? Do I? Yeah. Um, well, you said that you self-harm and your family knows about it. You know, I would like you to reach out to um, either of our organizations. Um, I've, I can definitely say that there's we'll help you find whatever's at the root of it but we'll be there at your shoulders uh, we will be there at your side don't give up giving up is not something that um, will help you in the long run um, you can get through this I believe Jimmy knows you're strong enough we know because Jimmy and I have been through uh, our own things and it may not be the same as yours but it was our own stuff enough to make us depressed suicidal self-harm whatever that happens to be. You can get through this, but the mo biggest thing is you're not alone. You know, there are people out here that want to wrap their arms around you. We care about you. We want to love you if you get let us get close enough to do that. But just trust us to be that light, to be something in your life that gives you a reason to hang on. I know how you're feeling. Uh, right, Jimmy? You know how they're feeling. Yes. Um, I want to say about how their family knows about it. Um, that I, I'm not sure about their situation, so I'm not sure if that's a good or a bad thing. But um, it's good to, to let one person know that you're struggling with this. Because, I mean, harming yourself and then having it lead to suicidal thoughts, that's not healthy and that's not good at all. Um, I, I would like you to contact me or Blair and let us know if your family knowing is a good or a bad thing and we can go from there but I want to let you know that you know as cliche as it sounds life is worth living um, I came from harming myself every single day you know over 40 cuts on one arm in one night to now dedicating my entire life 
to helping people stop self-harm and, you know, not doing that because that's not healthy and it'll quickly become an addiction and it will lead to things like suicidal thoughts. Um, I also want to say that if you email Blair or I, um, I'm sure Blair has some self-harm techniques too, um, but we have an entire list of self-harm techniques um, that will be customized to your situation to help you deal with these issues. There's two types of self-harm techniques. There's ones where you can get the feeling of self-harm, and there's ones where you don't get the feeling of self-harm, more emotional type things. Um, but there are options available. There is hope, and you know you can get through this issue as difficult as it may seem, as long as it may take. It it will be possible for you to get through this issue, and I truly believe that. I do too. And as Jimmy said, you know, there's no there's no harm in reaching out to both of our organizations, to both of us as well. I will have um, links uh, to to all the ways to connect with Holding of Wrist and to um, removingchains.org, which is our site that our Arc of Hope for Children uses. But I'll say right here, you can anybody that needs help can uh, email to hope at removingchains.org. And Jimmy, what's the email for? Um, to find Holding of Wrist, you can either go to www.holdingofwrist.com you can email info at holdingarist.com and somebody will respond very quickly. Excellent. And you can go to removingchains.org uh, as well. Um, if you don't see anybody there, email me. Email me through the ho hope at removingchains.org and we'll... I was there last night. Ah, excellent. Thank yeah. you. So you can come there. The thing is, you know, if you're going through self-harm, like you said, uh, Jimmy has excellent, excellent resources to, to help you deal with those. Um, and then if, you, like the person who said that, um, and my family knows, well, whatever part it is your family knows, I'm assuming there's possibly parts, as Jimmy implied, that maybe your family doesn't know, or maybe perhaps you don't feel safe to talk to them about it. Um, perhaps there's something going on there. Please talk to us. We, we can help, whether it's by email or the live chat. Um, even if you talk to Jimmy's organization about the self-harm and to us about the root or, you know, the we can both help you. We'll tag team. We'll do whatever we can. You, you're a huge value to us. We know that you're going to come through this and be uh, such a blessing in whatever way, that you're very gifted, that, it, that life in itself is, is worthwhile, but that you're a huge key to other people's lives, whether you see it now or not. So we ask you to please reach out to us via the emails, or the websites, or whatever way you can. Um, I mentioned arcofhopeforchildren.org. That's not where we do the live chat, but you can connect through that website as well. So please reach out. We will be there. And thanks for bringing up that uh, that post that somebody made, Jimmy. I've tried to deal with the technical difficulties of the video, the YouTube video uh, vigil. Uh, and was unable to while I'm doing this live. I can multitask, but apparently not that well. So what's going to happen with this video is it will record automatically as soon as we end this, and it should be up on YouTube within probably a half an hour, and then Jimmy and I will place it around as many places as we possibly can for you to see. Um, so thanks for, for putting up and uh, <laughs> we just accept our apologies that, that things went weird. So with that, Jimmy, what can what else can you think of that you would like to say as far um, as this as far as the uh, survey or anything else? You you touched a little bit on, you know, how their value to life and that that brings me to I was talking to a fifteen year old and she yeah, I was talking to her yesterday and she's going through self harm and suicidal thoughts. And what people don't realize is that you have so much value in this world. It's incredible how much value you have. 
um, you're 15 years old or you're whatever years old, but you have a ton of more years ahead of you. And you can do a ton of awesome things with those years. It's just a matter of getting through your current issues. Your current issues don't define your life. That's just your current situation, and you can get past that current situation. And I want to keep reminding people there are resources available. Um, holding of Wrists, we, we spent three to four months putting together an entire book of resources for you all because we're so dedicated to helping you. And we have every area in the United States completely covered with multiple resources in every, every area. It's insane. And we also have um, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia done too. And so there's resources out there. It's just a matter of, you know, finding those resources and connecting with them and reaching out for help. Excellent. And uh, both of us, you know, even if you can't find the resources that you need or you think you need, reach out anyhow. You know, people may realize that this is being recorded from within the United States, but as Jimmy just showed, they've got resources and we've got resources for UK and, and uh, Australia and let me tell you I've got people I talk to every day pretty much from um, far south in, the, in South America no matter what in Canada whatever you're going through wherever you are give this a shot you know there's been uh, on removing chains a really cool ability we have also to if if you know people going through things and they don't speak English um, we've got a translator chat program on there so um, it's a it's an extra chat that we were able to add so no matter what you're going through whether you're going through it or you know somebody um, please check in with us we're gonna uh, Fernanda has put some of the results uh, the initial results from the survey up and she's going to compile them or some, some a uh, more expert type person is going to compile them and make them available. Uh, Project for Healing Humanity is working on their website which will be able to be up soon so all those results will be able to be there but remember it's not about the survey itself. Um, it's not about um, you know uh, drawing people out into the light <laughs> so that, so that um, they'll become I don't know. Uh, I kind of lost my train of thought there for a second well, with my dog, but you know. <laughs> I can pick it up because um, that there, when I was looking through the survey, at the time there was 50 or so results, and I was looking at them, and you know, you're not just a number on that survey. You're a human being. You have value. You have a story, and you have, you're going to have an outcome to that story, a positive outcome. And so I just want to remind everybody that you're not a statistic. No way. Yes, there are over 2 million people that self-harm, but all 2 million plus people have a story, and they're each individuals, and they're beautiful individuals. And you're not, you're not a number to us. You're a human, and you know, we believe in you. That's right. So now, those things being said, we also want to – shout out to people who were going to be here that have emergencies or other things going on that did not allow them to. Um, we're going to figure out, I'm going to figure out a way to do maybe sort of private interviews on things that they may have wanted to say for this and we'll put those up uh, eventually either for Project for Healing Humanity or Arc of Hope or whatever because they've got uh, very awesome things to say in their own right. Uh, so much people were uh, Tamala Burkhart from uh, UK had an emergency, a family emergency at the last minute. She was going to be one of our speakers. Tamala has been through quite a bit in her own life, but she also reaches out through um, a Facebook group that she has. And um, I was trying to find where I wrote that down, but in all my technical stuff, I don't see it. Jimmy, do you see the name of her organization? It's Bar, I believe. Yes, um, Bikers Against Rape, I want to say it is. Um, right. I, I'm pretty sure that's it. I might be wrong. Yeah, Bikers Against Rape. Now, that she originates out of the United Kingdom. Um, I anticipate that we'll be working closely with, with her as well. But that's another awesome resource for you if you're you know, not, 
whether whether you're here in America or not, um, whether you're in the UK, I should say or not. Um, we're trying to cover this with as many resources as possible, uh, places for you to reach out in your time zone and in in somebody who will be as close as possible to you. So um, I will work out something with Tamala, and we will get her voice on what she has to say, her experiences, the things that she's been through and how she helps. She has a group, I believe it's a more of a kind of private group on Facebook where she helps as well. So that will be another resource we'll be bringing up and we'll post about also. Um, Jerome uh, Elam was going to be here. He's a, he's a um, journalist for the Washington Times communities had another family emergency uh, of his own so you know we're we're praying for all of them with their emergencies but uh, I believe Jerome having been a um, a child abuse survivor himself uh, would have had some very key things that he would have liked to have said um, so I'll, we'll be talking to Jerome uh, is, as it relates to self-harm as well. Uh, so if you would go, if any of you would go and like the Project for Healing Humanity page and uh, on Facebook, which is facebook.com slash project for HH, and also the YouTube uh, channel, which is youtube.com slash project for HH. Those videos will be able to show up in those places. If you're on Google Plus in our community, the Project for Healing Humanity community, of course, they're going to be there as well and eventually on the website. Um, there was going to be another special person that was going to be here um, from uh, the Caribbean, and she couldn't be here, but she's a valued friend of Project for Healing Humanity and Ark of Hope for Children. Um, if you would allow me a minute to read what she has shared, um, about something that's going on down there. She asked me to share this email, so I'll share it quickly with you all. Uh, just get it up here. But, okay, here we go. Um, <clears throat> it goes like this. As an advocate, there comes a time in one's advocacy when it becomes necessary to reach out and ask for help, as women, children, and men are counting on us. This work is not country-specific. It is a global fight. This work is not about one organization. It is a collaborative, collaborative effort and agenda. Whenever I ask, I'm asked to speak I, or share my story, I do it as a member of a greater network of global advocates, which is what Project for Healing Humanity has helped putting together. Being based in the Caribbean, her name is Sherna, uh, I am humbly carrying the torch for all other organizations and individuals connected with Awabi Voices, that's the name of her organization, um, and for Project for Healing Humanity. As we all have one collective voice in saying, I am saying no to abuse. Sherna writes to you because Awabi has been invited to PROSAF called Positive Reactions Over Secrets and Fears from St. Lucia to give support for the, their One Billion Rising event, which is on February 14th. Uh, just a few days, with the purpose of setting up and establishing the country's first rape crisis center and abuse hotline. Imagine that, the first one that they have over there in St. Lucia. So their founder has been asked to speak at that event. Um, she says parliamentary uh, politicians, members from the judiciary, armed force me forces members, members of the clergy, educators, students, and members of the public and private sector are going to be there in attendance at this. She has been asked to give a call to those in attendance to support the establishment of the Race Rape Crisis Center and Hotline. This event means women from all over St. Lucia and from all walks of life to stand together saying no more violence against women and children, that we are rising. After the groundwork has been laid and the Rape Crisis Center establishes <clears throat> Every organization and individual who made this trip possible will receive full recognition for their work and support in helping her to establish this center. So Sherna is therefore asking any organization and individual to please help make or help her in making the trip possible. 
She stands for all organizations but f and all networks co connected as a, a larger network. Every organization or individual who will make this trip possible on the 14th, their name and organization's name will be recorded and distributed to the officials of St. Lucia on that day. Um, she says, in closing, we received the letter of invitation late. We have no other choice but to request donations to help make the trip possible. Uh, the following is what would they need to do this. Number one, three airline tickets to St. Lucia at a cost, uh, total cost of $840. Number two, hotel and accommodations is a total cost of $960. Uh, so oh, let's see, I guess what we're going to have to do is make that information available to you uh, once this video is over. Um, and I will put whatever, links up or something, whatever I can do in that way to help Sherna and Awabi Voices get that going in the country of St. Lucia. So, um, boy, in closing, um, there's so much we would like to say, I'm sure, to reach out to you to say don't give up, whether you're one of the people that tweeted or made a comment or you're uh, or you see this months from now. So Jimmy, why don't you share with people something as if somebody is talking to you right now about what you would say to them to hang on, to connect with you, and to not give up? Well, like I, like I said, you know, there is hope and there is help out there, and there's, there's ways to overcome any situation that you're dealing with, and it all starts with reaching out for help. Once you reach out for help, there, there will be people there for you. Me and Blair are there for you. And we'll talk to you for years if we need to, to help you through the situation. Because I know very well that it takes years to overcome something. And it's definitely not easy, but there is hope and there is help and you will make it through this. And every single human in the world is a beautiful person and they deserve to be happy and live a happy life. And it's possible for everybody. That's right. I couldn't agree more. And I don't know that I could really add anything to that, but just, you know, as much as it seems perhaps difficult or to reach out or you think that nobody would really care, um, I guarantee you it won't be a waste of your time. You know, um, it's, it's in a sense as easy as reaching out and turning a doorknob. Just give it a try. The door won't open unless you give it that effort. You've got to lay the the first effort and give us the opportunity to be there. Um, as uh, I mentioned before, Removing Chains is a fairly new site. We're trying to get many, many, many more volunteers on it. But if you go there and nobody's there uh, that can help you, just um, email us. You see the emails on there as well for hope at removingchains.org and we will reach back. Uh, we do care. We want to help um, there's instructions how to use that site and there's all the instructions for how to get the help from holding of wrist on their site as well. So just hang on. Don't give up. There is hope. There is light. And there is change. Uh, so just give us the opportunity to help make that happen, help facilitate that in your life. So we want to thank everybody so much for being here and putting up with the glitches or anything else. Uh, the video is going to be live. Uh, I mean, it's going to be recorded. And as soon as YouTube makes it live or makes it uh, embeddable, we will post it all over the place. But thank you for being here. Thank you for those who filled out the survey uh, that got a chance to see it. And... Um, entrusted us with with your information. Everything we promise will stay an anonymous and we're going to figure out a way in whatever way to compile all this information and get it to people who are in the professional communities to say please recognize this somehow. Take this work and take it a few steps further because self-harm is a real issue and it is uh, and it is very real in these people's lives, and people are not just doing it for no reason at all. Uh, there's usually so much at the root um, that um, they can help with. So that being said, um, I will in a moment close us with a prayer. Jimmy, can you think of anything else you want to say? I think I've said it all, but um, 
I'm excited to hopefully talk with some of the people watching this um, because uh, every single time I get a new email, I love it because that's another person reaching out for hope. And that's all I strive for in life is, you know, getting back to people who want help. But that's pretty much it. I want to thank um, Blair and Project for Healing Humanity for bringing me on as a guest speaker. It was super fun. It was exciting, and I've been waiting for this. And I hope to do it again sometime. Awesome. We will. Because I have something planned that you don't even know about, so we'll be doing something again, <laughs> <laughs> you and I, soon. That's awesome. So, but aside from that, um, I just want to encourage you all and thank you all for being here, as I did a minute ago. Um, Project for Healing Humanities, uh, Humanity does these vigils um, fairly often. We've got another one coming up in June, and now the date escapes me. But if you friend our or follow our Facebook page, um, that will be the best way to be. Uh, brought up to date on everything that's coming up. This new vigil, we were going to do something on one topic that had to do with prison abuse, but uh, something has been has come to us, and we felt the need to change that vigil that's coming up. So the one in June, it's either uh, maybe Chris, you could even look up and get the exact date for me, possibly. Um, it's on the vigil or on the page, but. Um, Anyhow, hopefully he'll be able to do that. But the next one we're going to be doing is going to be devoted to the ladies who've been um, recovered, I say recovered, who were victimized by what they call the Magdalene Laundries. This is something that happened very much in Europe and the United States. Um, so some horrific things were done to these women in these places, and there are survivors who really, really want to reach out, who want to share their stories and they've reached out to Project for Healing Humanity. So um, we are going to honor them uh, by doing this vigil for them, with them, I should say, uh, in either June or July. Chris is going to try to find the date of the actual event, but if you follow us, you will get it. So I hope that you will be back with, with that. Um, also, Project for Healing Humanity, if you're here on Google+, Plus, they have a community now uh, that Google Plus has made available. So we've opened up a uh, channel, an area for people to talk about self-harm there. Jimmy and I will be checking there often um, to respond to anything people have to say within Project for Healing Humanities self-harm area within their community. So um, I encourage you to use that resource as well. So thank you for coming. Um, thank you for putting up with our glitches, and you're not alone. So I'm going to close this quickly with a, a short prayer, and then I will just end the vigil. So thank you. God, I just want to thank you for the many people that are out there that are going through all sorts of things, but especially in today, we're honoring and lifting up those that have been through, that are going through or have been through self-harm. Uh, in this case, self-harm relating to uh, sexual abuse has been our focus. We're lifting up everybody, but especially those, because we realize, Lord, that you know the, the, the self-harm is a result of something else that was done to them. Something was done by people who had uh, nothing but wrong intentions that did not care enough about the hurt that they were going to cause somebody else. Uh, the, 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 the possible harm that was going to be happening later. Um, I We reach out to them. Jimmy, Project for Healing Humanity, and I reach out to all these people. We want to tell you, people that are out there, that you know, as much as you can handle it or not, God is out there with you. If you just cannot handle even thinking about that or, or, or a God, that was perhaps not there for you. We are there for you. Um, I'm so thankful that the internet and all the possibilities are there. So as I pray to ask God to touch your your life in in any way, to provide you hope and healing, if you just cannot hear that, we understand. We are not. You are not closed off from us. 
for any reason, for no matter what your reason is for going for self farming, uh, we are here for you. So we thank you for coming. We thank you for this opportunity, and um, we just thank you that you haven't given up. So um, yes, so be in contact with us. We'll be in contact with you, and. Um, we love you. Amen. Amen. Thank <laughs> so, you. Thank you all for coming. This ends it. Hopefully the recording is going to work out perfectly, and uh, we'll see you soon. Take care. Bye.